Hello, hello, hi guys, happy Monday. Trusting that all is well with all of you. Uh, trusting that you would have recharged your batteries this weekend gone um, and starting off this goodly Monday with a full battery and not really with 23%. Uh, you know how we do that sometimes. Like a friend told me recently, you know, we charge the phone long enough so that we can get to use it again. So we charge it to 23% or we charge it to 30% 30, 30 but never leaving it so that it could fully recharge so that it could get the best and longest, long, long use time from the phone. And we do that with ourselves. We charge ourselves up back to like a 23 just so that we can go again for the next day. But I'm hoping that you're starting off this Monday on 100% on a full battery that will take you through the week. So trusting that you would have done something, read a book, had extra hours sleep, even if it's not sleep, just to lie in your bed for a few longer than you usually would. I hope you would have been able to do that this weekend um, and to do something enjoyable and relaxing for yourself. This week, I'm Beauty with Grace Devotionals. I just want us to continue from where we left off last week. Last week, I was telling us that we need to guard, let the peace of God guard our hearts and minds, um, to be careful, be mindful of the things that we think, um, to even pray, Holy Spirit, help your child, Holy Spirit, give me your peace, and to ensure that we have that gentle and quiet spirit at the inside of us, so that once this on the inside is calm, gentle, quiet, peaceful, despite what takes place in life. In every circumstance, the Lord of peace will keep us in peace. So I just want to continue this week um, in the same vein, I'm reading from Hebrews chapter 12 from verse 2, and it says, you want to that I have it open on it, right? Yes, from verse 2 it says, Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross. So he was not paying attention to the present circumstance, but what was to come. Um, so he was looking ahead, scorning at shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such a position from sinners so that you will not go weary and lose heart. So while you're on the oceans of life and the winds and the waves that you're not always uh, prepared for expecting um, comes, you're anchored in Jesus. Looking, keeping all your eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and finish of your feet. Keeping your eyes fixed on Jesus. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, so this is Jesus' example. So keep your eyes on the example that Jesus set while he went through his rocky, rough experience here on it as a man. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning and shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. So let that be an encouragement to you that while you're going through every circumstance where you want the peace of God to be maintained, like I said last week in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 16, that the Lord of peace will give you his peace in every circumstance so that while you're going through your different year, a difficult circumstance. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus so that you will not go weary and lose heart. In your struggle against sin, you have not resisted to the point of shedding your blood. Jesus did that. So while you're struggling with life's challenges, just know that blood was not required and is not required of you at this point. Um, and have you completely forgotten this word of encouragement that addresses you as a father addresses his son? It says, My son, do not make light the Lord's discipline and do not lose heart when he rebukes you because the Lord disciplines the one he loves. And he chastens everyone 
um, everyone he accepts as his son. So be encouraged. Just know that this is this is the love of God, <laughs> um, allowing uh, certain things that takes place in our lives um, because He accepts you as a son. And just as how Jesus' his son had to go through, um, what make you think? <laughs> When you say, all right, I take an upper cross and follow Jesus, that he wouldn't require the same of you, of us. Holy Spirit, help us. Verse 7 says, endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as his children. For what children are not disciplined by their father? If you are not disciplined <laughs> and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are not legitimate, not true sons and daughters at all. Moreover, we have all had human fathers who disciplined us and we respected them for it. How much more should we submit to the Father of spirits and live? They discipline us for a little while as they thought best, but God disciplines us for our good in order that we may share in his holiness. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. It produces a harvest of righteousness and peace by those who are trained by it, by those who allow the discipline of God, the hardship of life, those who endure that and allow it to discipline them, you will reap a harvest of righteousness and peace. And we want that peace. We want that gentle and quiet peace to remain on the inside of us. And so, I just want to encourage us this week, trying to stay very short in <laughs> this encouragement, to encourage us to endure, though it may not be pleasant. Um, the Bible says it's not pleasant, it, 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 it is not, not something that is um, joyous, it is not, um, Jesus himself scorned, was scorned in the shame of what he had to endure. Um, but he didn't go weary. He didn't. He didn't um, give up. He allowed the discipline of the cross to produce a greater harvest of righteousness and peace. So nobody, nobody who enduring discipline or hardship at the moment see it as something that is lovely or pleasant at the time. But it is. It is painful. And you may be going through something that is very painful, very tough, very difficult to bear. Um, but God requires us to endure um, that discipline as discipline from God. That is going to produce a harvest of righteousness. That is going to produce a harvest of peace. And so, um, despite the fact that you might be going through your rough waters. And my encouragement is that we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. Keep it fixed on the one who would have endured his discipline. The one who would not have in, uh, uh, Jesus said, and said, Lord, if it be possible, take this cup from me. No, he didn't want to have to deal with it. He didn't want to have to, uh, the, the, the human nature of Christ. At that point in time, Wanted that to be taken away. Wanted to have, wanted to say, um, permission, please. Could I skip this class? Could I not go through this, please? Could I not, could we, could I sit this one out? Permission to sit on sit this one. I'm going to sit this one out, Jesus. I'm going to sit this one out, God. Father, I want to sit this one out. But he endured. He endured the, score, the, 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 the painful experience of the cross for for what he was looking, the joy of looking forward, looking forward to me being in relationship with him, you being in relationship with him. That's what he was looking forward to. That is what he, that is what he allowed his gaze to be on. Let me not focus on what I have to endure right now, but look forward to what is to come because I endured. And so it may not always be um, the end result may not always be what you want it to be in terms of I'm going to get this is what I really desire and what I really want and I'm going to get it. Sometimes, like if you think about a, a ship at sea enduring 
heavy, heavy carrying cargo. Sometimes they just capsize and throw off things just to make the boat lighter. And so you may lose some things on the way. Some of it might be your own uh, mentality in a situation, your own things that would have made up your personality over, over years. Sometimes those are the things God trying to ship, chip off and cut away. So you may lose some things. Sometimes it might be valuable things. It might be people. Um, it might be relationships. It might be different things you might lose along the way. But at the end of it all, I am praying and trusting that you hold on, remain anchored, keeping your eyes fixed on Jesus so that at the end you will re receive a harvest. There's not no one basket or one cup. This is a harvest. That means a full, a full storehouse of righteousness and peace. So I just want to encourage us to endure whatever it is you might be going through, whatever painful, uh, unpleasant situation you might be enduring at this point in time or having to face. Um, just see it as the Lord disciplining you. Um, growing up, I, I didn't like licks and so I used to try to avoid everything that resulted in licks. And because uh, I, I never, well, I see my color. I didn't like to see my skin get red and wheel up and, and or black and blue um, at all. And so I, as much as possible, try to avoid anything that would uh, cause me to endure that level of pain um, from guardians <laughs> that were in my life at the time. And so nobody in likes discipline but when you do get the licks is a mental note you know what this not happening to me again <laughs> i'm not doing this again because i do like licks and so i just want to encourage us you me um anyone that you will share this video with that despite the fact that discipline is not pleasant uh you learn uh you grow and you are wiser at the end of it um, and you're able to, to help somebody else. Hey, girl, avoid that. <laughs> avoid this. Don't do that. Don't do this. You're able to share with somebody else. You're able to have an impact on somebody and influence somebody to make better choices because, because of what I had to endure, I know what the end result of this is and you don't want that or um, you might be able to tell them, yes, girl, I know this not feeling good at this point in time, but go through. Because at the end, you will learn so, 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 so. You'll be able to experience this. You will experience growth in this manner. Uh, and with everything, everything that is of any worth or value requires discipline. You want to use lose weight, it requires you to be disciplined. Discipline in what you eat. Discipline in you drinking water. Discipline in your exercise. You want to build a business, it requires discipline. To be diligent, to be consistent. To do when you don't feel like doing, to do when you're not feeling, when you're feeling discouraged, to do when you're, when it's not looking like it's working out, but to keep at it. And so anything that is of great value or worth requires discipline. And so in our Christian walk, discipline is required and discipline in our, discipline in our flesh is also required. And so if God uses hard, unpleasant situations to discipline us, my encouragement is to not want to run away from the discipline or to, I have a sister, I go call her name. When it's time for she to get licks, that girl used to run, run. <laughs> and my mother used to say, but I want to know where you're sleeping. It's not here you're sleeping, go ahead, you run. It's not for us to run away from the things that would cause the pain but sometimes it's to endure so that at the end of it you will reap the rewards and it may not feel like this is this could never be rewarded never be pleasant in any way um thankfully christ went through his difficult uh, experience with shedding blood <laughs> it required his life that, that, that's, that's, that, that discipline required his life, shed blood for us. And so we are re reaping the harvest 
the bountiful harvest and the peace um, that came because of his discipline, because he endured uh, the discipline of the Father. And I just want to encourage us that whatever God may be using to, to discipline you that may seem harsh and hard, don't run away from it, but rather try to find out, God, what is it that you want me to get from this? What is it that you want me to learn from it? Is it to master peace on the inside and in the midst of difficult situation? Is it to know how to allow you to fight battles for me? Is it for me to learn how to, to, to trust you completely? To trust you that despite what uh, it may, may be looking at what it may, what the end result might be, what I may lose um, in the process. To trust that this is your best intentions for me and as a result I am going to reap a harvest of righteousness in the end, a harvest of peace in the end. Um, and it might just be you proving to yourself how much how much do you really trust God? How much do you rely on God? How much do you trust God with your life, with your with your marriage, with your children, with your with your ministry? How much do you trust God um, with every aspect of your being? How much do you trust God with yourself? How much do you trust God with your reputation? Whatever that may be. Um, how much do you trust God? And that might just be your lesson to prove or to show you um, Job had to go through so that he would see himself at the end of it. And so I just want to encourage us to endure, um, to not run away from the discipline uh, because sometimes it could just feel like, like Jesus in the, in the garden of Gethsemane. Well, and you know what? Um, permission, please. But I feel like sitting this one out. Uh, nah, it's okay. <laughs> um, so I'm hoping that even though that is the feeling, your decision will be not my will, but your will be done, Father. And so I just want to encourage us to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. Keep your focus on Jesus. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. Keep your desire towards him um, and, and endure. Endure. Just know that the harvest will be a harvest of righteousness and peace. And Lord, do we want his peace to remain that gentle and quiet spirit that is of, a, uh, of great value and great reward, great price to the Lord, that that may be what we have on the inside. And that might just be it, learning to be at peace inside despite what may be going on, what may be happening. I know what it is to be at peace, to maintain peace, to keep my peace to keep my mind stayed on Jesus. Sometimes it's just a, it, it's not necessarily about, hardly ever is it ever about the situation itself or about the individuals that cause in the situation itself, but you, your development and my development at this point in time might be knowing how to be at peace, true peace, the peace that Christ left us. How to maintain that, how to harness that, how to keep your mind stayed on Jesus, to keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, the author. Maybe you have not been uh, excelling well in that, that, that lesson and God just needs you to be a little more disciplined in that area, a little more consistent in that area, maintaining your peace, keeping your peace despite what are you, can you maintain peace? Can you remain peaceful? Can you remain quiet on the inside? Even though this might be hard and difficult and painful, would your peace remain? Would the peace of God remain despite whatever, in every circumstance? Would you continue to think on things that are just lovely and have a good report? Would bitterness take root or would peace flourish? I just encourage us today to endure the discipline that you might be going through, keeping your eyes fixed on Jesus, the one who would have showed us the example of what endurance looked like and what experiencing a harvest of righteousness and peace looks like. And so until next time, my encouragement again is to keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. Stay anchored in the word. 
allow his peace to shine through let that be the beauty that shines through let your your smile always remain um I, I, there's a friend of mine that calls me she lives in Bermuda that calls me sister sunshine let not the circumstances that you are facing affect the shine that you bring on the lives of others on yourself it doesn't affect your peace your smile your joy at, at all at all at all at all so until next time guys stay safe social distance wear a mask um and keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. Love you guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. Hey, don't forget to check out the uh, starting our builder box this week. Come the 10th, um, which is today, um, our builder box promotion where you get 10% off all of your Christmas shopping that you would do on um, your gift items. Everything above 250 to So from if you spend $250, just know you're getting 10% off of your purchase from the 10th of October, which is today, to the 10th of December. That is the close of time. Um, don't wait last minute. Some of the things are very limited, uh, so while stocks last. And so, um, take in this final few seconds here just to encourage you to check out the Beauty with Grace page and to see what our gift selection looks like, what options you have, and of course, it's build your build your box and so you could just pick I like this one I like this one I like this one but I want this from this that from that this from this and build your own customized gifts for yourself for your friends uh, for family members at a 10% discount so don't forget to check that out also don't forget coming up at the end of October we have our day spa at Shalom's guest house in um, Valsin where you spend $350 myself and the beautiful Queen Melissa will be um, giving you all back massages together with drinks, uh, light refreshments while you spend the full afternoon from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the pool. Um, trusting God for wonderful weather. Come out and join us on Sunday, the 30th of October, and enjoy a spa day. We're doing self care Sunday poolside. So, looking forward to seeing you all then. Um, so, yeah, have a great week.